Hello, everybody. Welcome back to the Geyserology Roundtable. Uh, Bob, D, and I are going to continue, actually, uh, resume might be a better word, resume our uh, look at the Credence Clearwater discography. Today, we're going to talk about Willie and the Poor Boys, which was released in November 2nd of 1969. It was their third album released in the calendar year 1969. It was their fourth album released in just a little bit over a year. Uh, John Fogarty and crew were busy during this period. And uh, this, is a, this is the newest offering from them, if you're following along with us, Willie and the Poor Boys. And uh, Bob, I guess, is our resident Credence Clearwater Revival expert. So we're going to let him kick us off. Go for it, Bobby. All righty. Thank you, Scotty. So with uh, Willie and the Poor Boys, we see, in my opinion, a little bit more variety from Credence than we had on some of their previous uh, efforts. Uh, you've got some fun songs on this album. Uh, the title track, Down on the Corner, you know, where they kind of replicate uh, a jug band sound. And I did not know this until recently. So this is kind of a revelation to me that this was actually kind of starting out as a concept album and they were going to do a whole jug band thing, but you know, that kind of fell by the wayside, but you do have this one song, you know, that's got the jug band sound in it. Then uh, we've got another fun song called it came out of the sky, you know, which is a, a fun song about a country boy who discovers um, a UFO and claims it for his own and says, Hey, I'll sell it for 17 million, you know, and we get a couple instrumentals on here. Um, Fogarty and company cover a couple old uh, Lead Belly uh, tunes, uh, Midnight Special, which became one of their concert staples, and then uh, Cotton Fields. Uh, we get uh, Fogarty entering his uh, protest song era with uh, Fortunate Son and Effigy. Um, so yeah, there's some variety to this album. Uh, I know there are some people who, who want to claim that this is probably Credence's best album. Uh, I don't know if I'm quite ready to go there, but it is, a, I think, a, a very good album. And I want to talk about three songs in particular that I think really stand out to me that have some personal feelings or personal meaning. And the first one is Fortunate Son, which, um, you know, was Fogarty's uh, protest song about how the fortunate ones in this country don't make the same sacrifices that the rest of us do. You know, if you're, if you're from an influential family or if you're the son of somebody who's rich, you know, you don't serve in the wars. You don't wind up uh, going overseas to fight and all of that. And this, is, this was really brought back home to me because last week I served as a volunteer for the traveling Vietnam Veterans Memorial Wall. And it's set up right now in Kansas City down at the National World War I Museum. And this is an 80% scale size replica of the Vietnam Veterans Wall from Washington, DC. So I was serving my you know, four hour tour down there and I got to meet people you know, who came down to the wall and stuff. And there are the names of 14 people on that wall from my hometown. Uh, and I grew up in a city of about 16,000 people. And I always kind of thought that was a significant number of, of, you know, people who died in the war from my town. And I met a Vietnam vet there um, while, I was, while I was doing my little volunteer stint. And I kind of was talking to him about that. And he commented that he had noticed the same thing, that there seemed to be a disproportionate number of people from small towns. His theory was that back in the day when you could get a college exemption from the draft, that the kids growing up in these rural towns didn't have the same access to get off to a college that kids in the cities did. And this guy, you know, is a native of the Kansas City area. And he said he managed to avoid the draft because he was in college. And then once he graduated, they nailed it. So his theory was, you know, if you came from the city, you had a little bit better chance of escaping. Now, true or not, I don't know. But, you know, if his theory is correct, it lends you know, support to Fogarty's contention here in Fortunate Son that, you know, the wealthy and the elite don't pay the same prices that the rest of us do. Um, 
I also really appreciate uh, Credence's cover of the old Lead Belly song, Cotton Fields. I was born on a farm. I was born on an old fashioned working farm and I picked cotton. And I remember the agony of drag, dragging a cotton sack, you know, along those rows under a hot Missouri summer sun. And um, Credence's version of Cotton Fields, you know, they, they got a bouncy beat to it and everything. And I will tell you right now, there's nothing fun about a cotton field. But I, you know, I can relate to that. And then Effigy is another, in my mind, an incredible uh, protest song. And Fogarty wrote this song after watching Richard Nixon come out and confront some protesters at the White House and essentially say, you know, I don't care what you guys think. I'm going to go back in and watch football, you know. So he wrote a very powerful song out of that. So I appreciate, you know, this album because Fogarty's um, social consciousness and political consciousness, you know, really came to the forefront here. So like I said earlier, when I kicked off this thing, there's a lot of variety here and there's a little bit of everything, um, you know, for you. If you know, if you like serious songs, he's got several on here. We got some cool covers of old blues songs, um, you know, and then his fun stuff. And um, I think I see a continuing sophistication in Fogarty's songwriting here and um, more of just his prodigious output. I mean, the guy was like a machine cranking this stuff out back in the day. So, D, it's all yours, buddy. Okay. Thank you, Bob, for that uh, wide overview and, and personal connections. Uh, I don't ha <clears throat> have quite the personal connections. And as I've said uh, before, when we uh, talked about some of the uh, other earlier Credence records, I was always a casual fan. I, I only had one of their LPs over the years, but there was that two, maybe th three year period where they were just on the radio everywhere. And I can't think of a single that I did not like. Um, it's, you know, everything from, you know, Proud Mary and then this particular album, Willie and the Poor Boys, um, <clears throat> I had to revisit uh, this because there were still a few songs I was not aware of uh, until this past uh, week, and I like them. Um, I can't say I, I'm, I'm going to be a, a great uh, Creedence fan, but enough of, of a music listener to just acknowledge, you know, once again, uh, this run of albums uh, – you know, John Fogarty, I, you know, in sports, they call it being in the zone where, you know, if you're a baseball player, the baseball looks as big as a basketball. Well, I think in, in, in Fogarty's case, you know, he could write some of the greatest under between two minute and three minute songs around, which, you know, which says a lot. Um, and this album has those, uh, you know, from the opening track, uh, you know, Bob mentioned the, uh, you know, Fortunate Son. Uh, the commentary on the, which was the unfairness of, of the draft at that time during the, in the Vietnam War. And it still holds up today, um, I, I think, as, as a, as a uh, uh, apt uh, social commentary. And a couple of the songs that, that, and I had heard, heard them before, of course, these were the covers, uh, like Bob mentioned, Lead Belly, but cotton fields and I, I remember hearing it years ago by them and I thought this is one heck of an interesting uh, pick by them and I thought I thought it sounded great but you know with Fogarty's um, keen interest in the south and delta blues music I guess we shouldn't be surprised but it's <clears throat> you know uh, I know uh, picking cotton is not a fun activity but this does have kind of an upbeat you know, feel good. I, I think it's, you know, been sung as a lullaby from, you know, mothers to children for many, many years. Uh, the one, uh, I, a couple other notable songs on here that I wasn't familiar with was uh, Poor Boy Shuffle, uh, kind of a slow blues uh, album, which, which, which I like. And then uh, Feeling Blue, uh, which was more of like a, a, a blues jam. And Another uh, aspect of Credence albums, you cannot say they were ever overproduced or had a lot of extraneous sounds. It is, you know, classic of four piece, 
uh, lead, rhythm, bass, guitar, drums. And that's what you get. And I think that's what makes it accessible. You can kind of move in and move out of the songs. They don't, they don't take a lot out of you. Uh, but you can certainly get, uh, uh, it, it kind of brings you into the lyrics that Fogarty uh, was writing. Um, there was a, another tune on here, which I, I, <clears throat> I thought it was kind of uh, notable too, uh, called Don't Look Now, It Ain't You and Me, which is one of those songs, I think it's about class categories, uh, you know, working class, the poor, you know, who's, who's gonna pick your, who's gonna make your shoes for you, you know, who's gonna, you know, pick your vegetables for you. And uh, which, you know, it's, it's a theme with, with Fogarty, I think about uh, social justice and, and some of the things that, that he saw experienced because uh, he, he did grow up in a, a small rural community in central California, but boy, um, this album, if, if you go to um, uh, read some of the older reviews of it, you know, some say it's their best. Uh, I don't know if it's their best, but it, it's certainly from start to finish, you know, a solid, uh, you know, credence album. Um, and I, uh, you know, just have to, you know, say once again, um, you know, Credence, they've, they've, uh, uh, and I think the musicians on there are all, I think they're all quite more than just competent. I know Forberty has sort of criticized them in recent years, but, uh, yeah, this is more Delta blues, more country, uh, commentary. And, uh, there's one other song, uh, what's called Epigy, which is a little bit of, a a <clears throat> little bit of a haunting song, but uh, it's, it's there. So I think a little bit of everything in here, uh, it does leave you with, you know, that, you know, CCR was just one of the, you know, this is another uh, statement. They were once again, one of the <clears throat> leading voices and influences of the late sixties and, and 70s sound. Um, you can't separate one from the other, it's, it seems like. And uh, yeah, this, this was a, uh, a pleasant revisit um, to this album. Yeah, uh, where I'm coming from, I'm playing along here. I, uh, there was one in my lifetime, there was one credence, before we started uh, talking about the discography here at uh, Geezerology, there was one Credence Clearwater Revival album that I'd ever listened to front to back. That's going to be the next one, Cosmos Factory. So all these uh, that we've done so far to this point, I'd never heard before. I mean, uh, you know, obviously I've heard the hits. You know, I mean, there, there's no way that you could be somebody of, of, of my certain age and, and have never heard a Credence Clearwater Revival song, right? But... But that's what I knew. I knew the I knew the hits. I I I knew the songs that uh, you hear over and over and over in the movies. On you, you, you used to hear on top forty radio all the time, and on this particular album, obviously I knew down in the corner. Obviously I knew Fortunate Son, and I have heard uh, Credence's uh, version of the Midnight Special. A few times in my lifetime, and you know, this wasn't the first time I heard it, but this is the first time that I went have gone through this album like the previous three albums that that we've discussed. And I'll, I'm going to say right up front, uh, to this point, uh, we're at number four now. To this point, me coming in with as fresh of ears as I possibly can to listen to Creedence Clearwater revival albums. This is uh, hands down my favorite Creedence Clearwater revival revival album that we've listened to to this point uh it's just it, it it just seems to me like uh uh it, it's just it's just more assured it's more uh there's more confidence here uh and i don't i don't know i don't know how how much the uh uh a bigger variety happened uh 
happen here to my ears anyway. There's 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 not too much more variety here to my ears than there were in the first three, but it, but it's but it's just the feel of this album and and the uh, and the sound that comes out of this album is just it just seems to me like it's just it's just the most solid one, and and my new favorite uh, Creedence Clearwater revival songs one that i've never heard and and i don't remember ever hearing this song but this song effigy that closes the album this this is a great song i love this track i just fell in love with that track and uh and i want to say i want to take a little detour here whoever is the first person that came up with the idea to start reissuing his albums and then tacking on crap at the end of them you know I, I would like to know who that first person was who came up with that idea. And I, I would like to, like to take them out in a cotton field and lose them there. <laughs> you know? It just kills me when I'm sitting here and I'm, and I'm digesting this album. You know, I got this thing up and I'm digesting this album. And then, it, and then this, one, this one in particular goes off on this great freaking track effigy and i'm sitting there and i'm and i'm just i just want to digest this you know and just think about what i've just heard and then all of a sudden they, they, they start throwing at you these old crappy old live tunes at the end of it and you just you, you know i just have to reach for reach for the uh, controls to shut this crap off <laughs> <You know? laughs> i hate that i i hate i hate that i've, I've hated that since I, this started becoming fairly prevalent in the 90s when they started tacking bonus tracks on cds and i just hate that it's like you know i don't want to hear this hear this crap you know, it, it was it was crap. It wasn't on the album in the first place because it wasn't good enough to be on the album in the first place. So stop throw, shoving it down our throats now, or you know, put it on a put it on a different collection CD or whatever for the fans. But stop doing that. <laughs> uh, anyway, that's my rant. Uh, yeah, this is uh, like I say, this is my favorite Creedence Clearwater revival album to this point. And I really enjoyed this record. And uh, as I said before, you know, I've, I've enjoyed all three of these, all four, now four. I've enjoyed all four of these Creedence Clearwater revival, revival albums as I've, as I've listened to them and, and listened to them with, with fresh ears. I think they're good, but we're also, as much as I like this one, I'm at a point now after four albums uh, and I know what's coming, like I say, because I'm, I'm familiar with the next one, but I'm, but I'm trying to react as though I'm playing along and going in consequence here, going in uh, consecutive order here. And I'm at a point now where I really like this album I'm, and, and I'm thinking, okay, uh, this is, this is a good as uh, this, this is as good as you've gotten so far, but now I'm at a point going, what else do you have for me? <laughs> You know, it's like, you know, it, 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 we've gone down this really solid, tight path with Creedence Clearwater Revival music. And it's starting to get to the point where, okay, I want to hear something else from these people, you know. And and I know, I know the, uh, uh, I, I know, I know from my history lessons what comes later. And we'll talk about that as we get to those discs. But that's what I'm thinking at this point. If I'm if if I'm going through this journey right now, it's like okay, I, you know, I, I want to hear something different because um, they're all uh, they're all starting to get this uh, real sameness about them. Uh, Bob mentioned in one of the earlier discussions we had that. Uh, you know, it's a common criticism that people say, "Well, Creedence Clearwater." Revival has made the same album like five or six times over. Uh, and I can kind of see that point, but I will say that each of these four albums and, and, it, and, it, and it really struck home with me on this one. They aren't the same album. I mean, they're different. This is the same Clearwater, Creedence Clearwater Revival sound. It's that, you know, that down home, what we now call, you know, the Swampy Rock, the John Fogarty Swampy Rock. It's, it's, it's all that same stuff. And, and there's some sameness about it. But when you, when you really dig into these things, there are, there's, there's a little bit of a difference in each of these albums. Just real quickly, the first one, you know, was, was Credence, uh, you know, trying to find a voice and, and, and kind of pulling, 
you know, uh, pulling some uh, inspiration from the psychedelic rock that was going on at the time and, and, and putting their own uh, spin on it, you know, with the extended jams and things like that. The second one was, uh, was just pretty straightforward, solid uh, American blues rock album, sort of Credence's spin on American blues rock. Uh, the third one, uh, which was a previous one to this, what was it? What was it? Uh, Green River. That was that was a little more of a rock, a little, little less on the blues, a little more on the rock. And I have to say, and I don't know if if, there was, if this was tempered because I knew this going in that this originally started as Credence, uh, or at least Fogarty, trying to do a, a, a jug band album, but this to me has sort of that more than any any of the previous album has sort of that down home rural feel to it like a bunch of guys you know sitting around you know out in the front front porch with their friends gathered around and they're just sitting there playing some music you know it it has that feel to this to me especially especially accented by you know them doing the, the two covers here cotton fields and the Midnight Special. That that those those two songs in themselves gives gives it that feel of, of just a bunch of guys sitting around a porch playing their music, right? With their with their band. There's no banjos here, but 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 it gives me that visual when I'm listening to this. So so even if they abandon this concept for marketing purposes, I think, and probably as these songs were being written uh, and recorded and everything. This, uh, I mean, that that concept anyway was 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 behind a lot of the a lot of these uh, tracks here, because it really comes through. I think if you really listen close and pay attention and try to get this whole thematic thing going here, I, I think it's there. I think it's there. They may have abandoned. There there are a couple of song, couple of tracks that it's not there. Fortunate Son uh, seems it, it's almost like an outlier here because that Fortunate Son is is obviously a uh, 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 protest song about Vietnam, which doesn't fit in the whole you know rural jug band thing, so that's kind of an outlier here. And, and effigy, kind of that, but effigy has a little bit of that feel to it. Uh, but maybe that concept was abandoned, at least as a as a marketing uh, ploy. But but there's still that feel here of of sort of that. Uh, uh, jug band spirit if not if not truly a, a jug band replication there's that spirit of it here i really like this one i really like this album uh, i look i'm looking at all the uh reviews of it here and yeah pretty much the critics at the time they all loved it too this is a good one this i'm i'm and i'm glad i listened to this one uh a very good album it uh again it's it's a you know, just like the previous one, this is all John Fogarty. You know, Fogarty plays the lead guitar, uh, Fogarty sings, and Fogarty produced. Uh, and again, just like just about the time I started thinking that there's some, a lot of sameness about the, all of a sudden uh, this this track "Effigy" uh, hit my ears, and I went, "Whoa, what the hell is this?" I really like that. I really like that song. Um, yeah, that's pretty much, uh, I mean, what more can be said about a Creedence Clearwater revival album, <laughs> right? Um, uh, pretty much everything's been said about it, but that's just kind of my personal take on it. Um, uh, and you can even tell on, on the credits, like John Fogarty is not only vocals and lead guitar, but he's also credited with maracas, cowbell, harmonica, uh, Stu Cook plays a wash tub bass. Uh, Doug Clifford plays a washboard on uh, track four, which is uh, the instrumental side of the road. Uh, yeah, that feeling was definitely here. Uh, and uh, yeah, there's, there's just just that rural, rural folky uh, sort of. You know, I, I I think of uh, I think of that jug band on the Andy Griffith show all the time when I when I think about this sort of thing, and that, that's a visual I get. Is that is are, are those guys sitting around on uh, Andy and Mayberry's front porch, you know, with, with their stuff? Mm -hmm. And that, and 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 this this, cert, this certainly most of this album most of this album certainly has that feel. I I really enjoyed it. I really enjoyed it. Uh, 
I know that this is also the point I'm reading on Wikipedia that that this is kind of the point where the other three guys are really starting to get irritated uh, with uh, with with John Fogarty's uh, dictatorship or whatever whatever word you want to use to describe his uh, his control over this. So I did read that. Uh, uh, they're starting to have arguments over, over this tremendous amount of output they're doing. Like I said, this is the three, third album in the calendar year, and I guess the other guys in a band were going, you know, let's slow this thing down, <laughs> you know, where Fogarty, Fogarty thought that, you know, we're, we, we're hot, we're hot, we have, we have people's ears, let's just, let's just throw it out there, throw it out there, throw it out there, throw it out there. A lot of arguments went over having two A-sided singles all the time, like down in the corner of Fortunate Sun. That was just one uh, uh, 45 RPM platter. You know, there were, there were two hit songs, but it was, but it was the same record. It was the same 45 RPM record. Uh, and which happened with, uh, with a couple of tunes from, uh, uh, from Green River. And I, so I see there was a lot of, uh, uh, there was a lot of arguments going on over that, you know, where, where John Fogarty insisted on doing it that way, where the other guys were going, you know, let's spread this stuff out a little bit. <laughs> You know, we're, we're just, we're just, oh, we're just flooding people with the, with, with this good material. Let's, let's slow it down a little bit. So anyway, but that was, I, I just say that because, because uh, apparently at about this time, this is when the, uh, the fissures and the band really started, uh, uh, really started widening. <clears throat> and I guess we'll, we'll learn as we go through the next uh, couple discs when we see the stuff just, just start exploding. Like, I suppose. Anyway, great album. Uh, my favorite Credence Clearwater revival album up to this point. And I, I agree with, uh, I, I, I agree with those, with those critics who probably wrote that back in the day. Uh, I really like this one. I, I like the first three, but, but this one, was, this is my favorite of the first four so far. Uh, any final thoughts, guys? You mentioned Scott about, uh, the sameness of Credence stuff. And yes, there is a certain element to that because, you know, Fogarty found um, a groove, you know, which was his Southern, you know, stuff. And yeah, casual listens, it sounds like, casual listening, it sounds like he's mired in that. But there are, if you, if you dig deep, you will notice, I believe, distinct differences between these albums. And uh, you mentioned it, Scott, they started out kind of psychedelic with those extended jam songs because because Fogarty um, wanted to get some cred built up like with underground FM radio. So he did some of those um, psychedelic type jam stuff to get on FM radio. And he did a lot of personal stuff in his earlier albums. This album isn't quite as personal because, like I say, we got some songs that really don't probably relate to Fogarty's personal life. They're more generic, like Down on the Corner, It Came Out of the Sky, things like that. And then you've got, you know, the biting social commentary. And uh, I agree with you, Scott, on Effigy. Man, that song just sends chills up and down my spine. And uh, it starts out, last night I saw a fire burning on the palace lawn. Over the land, the humble subjects watch in mixed emotion. Wow. You know, and um, like I say, it was inspired by that whole Nixon confrontation with protesters. And um, so, and then Dan, one final thing that you mentioned on Fogarty's songwriting, you know, the guy had the ability to pack a powerful message into three minutes. And uh, his writing is, is on point. It's succinct. The, the music is tight, you know, there's not a lot of extraneous stuff in there. So, yeah, I, I think that if you dig deep, you will find differences in the Credence albums. Yeah, I mean, my, my enjoyment of this album really had very little to do with, uh, you know, protesting Richard Nixon or, you know, force and son protesting war. Yeah, I'm not. I'm not a lyrics guy. I just know how it sounds and how it and how it feels. And that effigy is a killer track. I had I had no idea what the lyrics were. 
<laughs> words and music. I pay, I pay no attention. Music. I pay no attention to that. I'm, I'm sorry. I said words and music. Words and music. Well, I'm listening to music. Yeah, if I if I want words, I'll go read a book. <laughs> Or, I'll, or if I want if I want words, I'll go read our blog at Geezerology. <laughs> oh, <laughs> hey, thank you. Geezerology.com. <laughs> thank you for mentioning that because if you go to our website, geezerology.com, you will find a column that I wrote specifically about Fortunate Son. So I'll plug our webpage yep. and me at the same yep, time. That's there. Yep, that's there. I remember that one. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, you mentioned just real quickly about the overall sound of it. And I, I think of, uh, you know, down on the corner. And of course, you, you have to hear the song a few times. He's talking about Willie and the Poor Boys. And maybe this was Fogarty's attempt to do his, his version of Sgt. Pepper. We're going to be Willie and the Poor Boys for this album, you know, yeah. but it, it didn't really go beyond uh, down on the corner. But uh, I read a couple other older. Uh, reviews of it and apparently like a few other Creedence songs uh, Down on the Corner is actually quite a popular dance I mean people get up and dance to it I, I mean and it has that kind of a beat to it not that you would get up and dance to like a you know a disco song well, it's not, yeah it's not, it's not like going it's not like going to the to, to the sock hop but it's more like yeah uh, yeah. yeah up tempo uh yeah happy 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 little uh song i think we've pretty much uh talked this one out you think i think so yes. thanks for listening everybody uh join us again in, in a few weeks we'll go to the next one cosmos factory uh so we'll continue with uh with credence down the road and we have a few other uh pretty interesting things coming up i seem to recall that i have planned to do to have a discussion pretty soon about a, a, an obscurity called Sugarloaf, <laughs> which, uh, which is a one hit wonder with a song Green Eyed Lady, which was actually one of, well, I think all three of us at, at some point or another uh, uh, used to enjoy listening to this album. But we're gonna, we're gonna talk about that one coming up, something something just out of the blue that, uh, that we're gonna pull out. And a few other uh, great things. We'll, we'll continue with the band at some point and, uh, and, and a couple others that we started. Thanks for listening, everybody. Check us out at www.geetherology.com. Uh, subscribe to our YouTube channel, and we'll talk to you soon. So long. Mm -hmm.